Okay, so that's 12.30. Um, good day, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow enthusiasts of uh, technological advancement and knowledge. So, welcome to uh, PMCC's second Brain Huddle of the Year. So, today promises to be an enlightening experience, and I, Dini, am honoured to be your guide on this journey. So, while many of you are familiar already with PMCC, uh, allow me to extend a warm welcome to any newcomers. So, PMCC, or what it stands for, Project Management, Coaching and Consulting, as you seen, may have seen on the uh, promotional video just now, uh, we offer a wide range of services, uh, primarily in the construction and railway systems industry. So for, as for this brain huddle sessions, um, what it is, is basically it serves as a platform for experts to share on their insights that are relevant to the current market trends, bridging the gap between uh, theory and practical application. So if you're new here, be sure to follow us on our social media and visit our website to stay updated on any future sessions that may be beneficial to you. But before we delve into today's brain huddle session, I must express our gratitude to each and every one of you for your unwavering support. Your presence is what fuels our commitment and to deliver valuable knowledge that you can implement in your professional and personal lives. Now, today's brain huddle session is a bit of a little bit of a special session brought to you by PMCC Cafe. Now, I will bring upon to you what PMCC Cafe is. So basically, it's our initiative to empower everyone to harness the power of AI in project management. So with bite-sized sessions packed with insights, PMCC Cafe offers knowledge in manageable portions, ensuring that learning fits seamlessly into your busy schedules. So each session is akin to taking a sip from a cup of coffee. So that sip is a sip of insight, but it is a leap in expertise. So without further ado, I'm honored to introduce our esteemed speaker for today. With over three decades of coaching experience and a master practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming, whatever that is, our CEO and founder of PMCC Cafe stands as a beacon of wisdom and inspiration, his expertise extends far and wide, making him a respected figure in the realm of professional development and railway systems integration. So today, he will graciously share his insight on unleashing the potential of AI in this new professional frontier. So brace yourselves for an enlightening discourse on AI x AI. What the other AI means, I'll let the speaker introduce you to it. So, but first, let's some house rules to, you know, uh, keep the peace here. One is uh, you feel free to turn on your camera to enhance the engagement. Uh, second is to keep yourself muted unless you want to, uh, you know, you have questions or you have um, concerns or anything. Third is to, uh, we will have a Q&A session near the end of this session today. So that time you can put in the chat box whatever questions you have or you can just unmute your mic and shoot away. Lah. So please go ahead, Peter. So, hello and welcome to our today's uh, brain huddle session um, with AI, multiplied AI, unleashing the potential at the new professional frontier. As you heard from Dini, it is also an uh, involvement from PMCC Cafe, which I will give you a quick sentence on the next slide. However, guys, why are you here today? Um, fact is that you, you want to understand this formula which we have created which is AI multiplied by AI 
equals results. Um, I believe going into AI, into the future over the next few weeks, months, and years to come, you need to really understand that it makes a big difference how you will apply it. Then an important one also, you know, everybody got the gadgets here, isn't it? Uh, So-called smartphones. And I can show you how you make it finally clever and gain half a day per week of your working time by being AI enabled. So this session today here, what you what you hear today will give you enough understanding how to apply AI and it will give you um, benefit of half a day. That means when you apply what you learn today, you will save, um, I, I, the way I show it is every day about um, one hour. Um, you can say, yeah, it's Friday afternoon, which you gain, but ultimately that's what it is, what you will get out of it. And then it makes you also a future-proof leader because it's not just about AI. There is much more to it because the future will be changed due to AI. So these are the four key reasons you are here. And what is PMCC Cafe? PMCC Cafe is all about adult learning. It's it's not what what we learned in school, isn't it? In school, I remember there was never ever anything about artificial intelligence. Um, whatever is taught in school nowadays, it's maybe a start of AI, but these people will not be in the workforce for the next 10 years. Hence, PMCC Cafe is covering whatever we talk about AI, application in project management and leadership and apply it with coaching and AI, um, basically the enforcement. This is our new platform where we have this adult learning covered. So now what is the tool we are showing or we are using? Look, guys, there are, as you can see here on the right side on the screen, we have so many tools, which mushrooming basically on a daily basis, something new is coming up. However, what we are doing, we focus on ChatGPT. ChatGPT is one of the biggest besides Google or um, the Copilot from Microsoft now. So, uh, however, ChatGPT is available for everybody. You can have your free account and as you know, the, the browser version or then the, the handphone version. The app is also available and free available for everybody. That's why we focus on that. And you can, whatever we show as well, more or less, you get it on, on the Google platform or the Microsoft platform, you get similar results. But again, it depends um, how, how we apply it, what, what version of model and all that we will see later. Now, the video here, um, this is the next big thing on ChatGPT as well, which, uh, oh, it stopped already, huh? yeah. So that's the next big thing where you can see the quality of video, what they are showing here, which is amazing, isn't it? Just by inputting text, you get this kind of quality output. They will release it to the public over the next few weeks, I believe. And then we have this kind of benefits from ChatGPT even so we don't need any specific tools otherwise because it's all in the one and only tool itself now what we have here click away the thing so how you make your smartphone clever um i suggest for those who attend here you know if if you have your phone available basically install um this app here i hope you can see uh, it's on the App Store, available for free for download, and we are going to use that. However, please, please be aware, what I'm using here, what I have in PMCC, we have the team account from ChatGPT, which means I have a little bit more features, so I can upload straight uh, PDFs or files or anything. However, the team's account is the good news. It is keeping my documents safe, basically from publishing or future training of the um, AI. At least that's what they say. Um, that's in their disclaimer. 
So that's why I have a little bit more advantage here. However, the free version is good enough to start. And please take the disclaimer that, you know, whatever you upload, be aware that if it's personal, if it's um, proprietary, proprietary software, respectively documentation from your project or company, this is literally your choice, what you are doing. If you are on the free version, I wouldn't do that. Um, except you have the permission maybe from your company to do so. Um, but that's the point. Be careful what you are uploading nowadays because eventually it will be used um, for training or for their own databases. Uh, keep in mind, whichever tool is free, usually you are the product. Um, and, and that's why we are using here the pro version. So I suggest install while I'm talking here, the app parallel to your phone, and then we can, you can use it straight afterwards in the examples I'm showing you. Oops. So, okay. So what is AI and what is ChatGPT and how do we use it? It's pretty simple. That ChatGPT is a very powerful AI tool, um, so so called large language model. And it is designed to understand the human language and trained to respond based on the world's knowledge it is trained on. Simple as that. To me, very simple. Think of it as a virtual assistant that can basically converse and answer questions and provide insights instantly at the tip of your fingers or your voice. I will show you later how that goes. And then to basically get the best out of ChatGPT, it's very helpful to be very clear and specific in your prompts. And we call that prompt engineering. I will give you also examples later on. And here, I just a bit of voice it's, from it's going to sound completely our opposite of what you've been doing over the course uh, of the last 10 years, 15 boss. years. Um, almost everybody who sits on a stage like this would tell you, you guys it is vital that your children learn computer science. Um, everybody should learn how to program. And in fact, it's almost exactly the opposite. It is our job to create computing technology such that nobody has to program and that the programming language is human. Everybody in the world is now a programmer. This is the miracle of artificial intelligence. The countries, the people that understand how to solve a domain problem in digital biology or in education of young people or in manufacturing or in farming, those people who understand domain expertise now can utilize technology that is readily available to you. You now have a computer that will do what you tell it to do. It is vital that we upskill everyone and the upskilling process, I, I believe, will be delightful, surprising. So you will hear more from this guy because he's the boss of NVIDIA, the company who is providing the most profound AI computing chips as we speak. So uh, I believe he knows what he's talking about. In a nutshell, what he said is, we do not need to become programmers anymore because those chips, these people do, these chips will basically create the program for us based on what we talk about, what we want, what we need. And that's exactly, can you imagine, you know, what is what that means for the future? So, um, yeah, just watch the video. <laughs> Where is everybody? You haven't heard, son? AI took over. So, yeah, <laughs> AI took over. Um, it, is, it is a bit of fun here, obviously. But fact is that AI will change the world, isn't it? It, it will not become, the world will not be the same as we know it. Simple as that. But there is one key point here that AI is not going to take your job. It is the person who use AI who is going to take your job. Do, do you? I, I hope you guys understand this this point that it is not about AI actually. AI is a tool like anything we had before. You know, 150 years ago, everybody was riding on a horse, and then eventually the Ford came and and basically provided the car and the horses not entirely eliminated but basically the cars took over the world in the 80s 
the computer took over the world, isn't it? And I remember the vision those days from um, Bill Gates, what well, he said in the 1975, he has a vision that there will be a computer on every desk. And those days they laugh about him. Nowadays, how many computers do, I have, do you have at home, isn't it? So the computer took over the world. And now the next one is AI will take over the world. And it is a matter of how fast you can actually learn. My biggest concern is not AI, uh, can we do or not? Guys, can you see the speed on how fast AI actually is changing the world? That's the key we need to look at. So enable yourself with AI is critical. Now, how you can actually upscale yourself? Look, look at the working days, normal working week, five days, eight hours, talking about 40 working week, 40 hours working week. So ah, sorry. Um, this is basically Monday to Friday. Now, with today's course, you become AI enabled, where you save Monday to Friday. Friday, one hour, one day. In other words, it's half a day saved for you. That's guaranteed. Then there is the AI enabled pro. We have a workshop on the 4th of May where we teach for full, one full day how to use whatever I'm talking today in more details, more examples, and um, additional points to take in and for you to practice where you become AI enabled pro. You will save guaranteed two hours per day using AI tools. And if you know how to actually upscale your processes using AI, you will be much faster. And then there is, of course, the AI enabled master, uh, basically where you will go. There is a um, conference coming in July with um, the Malaysian chapter from PMI, where they will give a whole day conference on AI um, different speakers as well. And that will help further. And of course, with all the practice we, we teach here, you will eventually save three hours a day, which is more than half, uh, one and a half day per week. And guys, can you actually see that point, which is, it is crazy what that means for us being AI enabled, the productivity and the quality gain we have. So what they do from um, Harvard Business Review, they say, based on their studies, um, teams to do more, uh, they do much more with open AI, about 12% more tasks completed. That means you become more productive because you can do more, isn't it? And then they say it's about 25% faster for task completion. That means you can do whatever document you need to do. You need to do it anyway, isn't it? But with AI, you will be about 25% faster. And then there is also an increase in quality. Um, in my example, it is pretty obvious. My English, I'm not native speaking, but when I hack in any text or whatever and use AI to polish my English, so obviously the quality is better. When I do a report, the report has definitely no more typo errors. The English is much better and also more clear in what's the outcome. So it's this combination of how we actually upscale ourselves with AI. Now, it's just an example that you see what's going on. I will make it a bit faster here. What NVIDIA is doing, they basically create an AI where they simulate the entire world's weather. Um, what they want to do is basically the extreme weather with, the with their cyclones and, and um, the the storms they have over the Philippines or the uh, Americas to and there are five predict these storms data. much earlier Using in order to yeah, basically like can be super prevent people from, from, from suffering in these kind of storms. So that's very, very helpful. And, and this is possible now because we got AI. That's models. one of the examples. And we have another one here where Guys, Amazon, you know, it's happening as we speak. So this is reality, guys. Amazon actually has um, this warehousing where basically they, they shift all, all their products automatically with robots and only a few people are controlling these processes. 
you know. Then we have another one where um, we go into farming. Basically, it's like the old days. My mom sent me, we had a little garden, so I always had to pluck out the weed. Um, it was a very boring, very, I didn't like it, of course. Now, you get a tractor running through the field and basically laser the weed out and AI will define which one is weed, which one is, is real um, plants. And there you go. So these are examples which are crazy. I just saw another example as well in the UK. They got a grocery shop. Not as we know, it is a factory. All the groceries products in, people order online, and 2,000 robots basically pick, 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 and sort out the grocery uh, basket um, in order to pack it and send it then via the delivery guy to the, to the people home. So, guys, AI is taking over the world faster than we think. Now, these are the general ai tools isn't it this is it's happening like whitetail also they just um open a data center here in johor with uh, and latest nvidia uh, computer technology with ai and it will be a big thing guys trust me it is happening as we speak and that's why you have this urgency to learn ai and start using it uh, now, how can you become AI enabled to save this one hour a day? And you think it's like, hey, I work eight hours. That means I should be able to do the same job in seven hours. It's a fair question, isn't it? I show you how. That's the formula. AI multiplied by AI equals the result. Now, the first AI, guys, it is your actual intelligence it is your common sense you bring to the table it is it is what what you understand in today's world you have your knowledge your education but to me it's not just the educational part you bring to the table it's actually the you know street smartness because ultimately you want to make the artificial intelligence to produce a specific result isn't it so here it is. Artificial intelligence, we talk about now ChatGPT in, in, in our example here. It basically is trained on the current world knowledge. The way they train that model, it is not something from outer space or anything. It's, it's simple. It's the world's knowledge at your fingertip. That's what it is. So... It's, it's the library, usually those days, 20 years, 25 years ago, you had to walk to a library in your kampung, in your town, and get a book, isn't it? Sign it out, take it home, read it, bring it back, eventually. I never brought it back, never mind. But this is, this is basically what it is. AI is trained on the current world's knowledge. And again, what you get out from there is the current model. Do you use ChatGPT 3.5 or the 4.0 like I have? Um, the version of AI itself. And then there is also the computing power available for my chat. Sometimes in the evening hours, the whole thing is very dragging, very slow, um, or not even responding. And then it gives me hardly a good text. And sometimes it just like flows and I get the perfect result. But that result comes from the prompt engineering, my actual intelligence, I plug in, so it's the IQ, EQ, and even SQ with the social understanding. What do I want from it? And the detailing of input and the quality of the input, that gives me the result, which ultimately re results in higher productivity, the better quality outputs, and more diversity, isn't it? So the big problem is, what do I want? Sometimes it's like, uh, how can I use AI? what is what is what is my result i'm expecting so but this is actually a problem not about ai this is your personal issue isn't it if you don't know what you want hence clarity when when you key in whatever the prompt is clarity makes a big deal it is like talking to a kid you need to be very specific what you want it to do isn't it what you want the kiddo 
to get for you, to do for you. you. If you are not clear, it does just anything else, but not what you really want. It's in leadership the same. If you are not clear with instructions, thing will not happen. Specificity, specificity the detailed inquiry. So very clearly, how specific are you? What What is the, the inquiry you have? And then the purpose, you know, you need to tell AI, now you are a doctor and you can ask anything about illness, what do I need to do here or there? And it gives you even in proper doctor language terms, the stuff you need. If you want lawyer answers, then tell. Now you take a role as a lawyer. Um, for me, become a consultant in project management and um, be trained on uh, PMI uh, standards. And it basically will take on that kind of role and it knows what where to look for your answers. And that makes a huge, huge difference. And then the result. As I mentioned before, you know, whatever you upload, this is one thing. But your responsibility to verify the result is as critical as never before, because that's where your actual intelligence plays a huge role. You know, uh, AI is not perfect. It can have errors. It can misunderstand your request. It can come up with some fancy repetitive um, paragraphs. So you need to figure that out. You cannot just copy paste and publish or click send. It is always, you know, you're reading for the clear and uh, answer that it is comprehensive as well um, and understandable that the jargon used. I mean, if you say are a, you are a lawyer and then the out output will be more lawyer language, is it what you really want? Will people understand or verify the technical terms as well? And whatever result is there, fine tune that result to basically improve the quality. Sometimes less is more, isn't it? So reduce the paragraphs output and make and say, give me more comprehensive, uh, shorter text. And that's how it will come out actually. Now the dilemma of we don't know what we actually don't know, isn't it? So sometimes we have a challenge because AI knows the whole world's knowledge. We don't. Hence, sometimes we don't know what question to ask. So here it's a simple cookbook thing or recipe. Give ChatGPT your current situation and ask for ideas. Then based on the ideas ChatGPT will give you, you can actually create your own idea. Oh, that's maybe the direction I'm going. And you can start detailing um, you know, get an outline, get a checklist and more details towards that direction. And once you have actually direction, your outline, you can fill the gaps. So currently ChatGPT cannot write a book for you in one go, simple as that. So if you want a 200 page book, you need to first give your situation. I want to write a book about X, Y, Z. And then that gives you the ideas what you can actually do. From there, you create the outline. From the outline, you start filling in the gaps with more detail and content. So basically, that's the way you build it up, isn't it? I give you a very technical, very practical example we have in projects, isn't it? So there is a method statement um, to be written. So it can happen to our junior engineers, let's say, that I have a situation, I should write a method statement about installing a set of PV panels. Um, I'm, I'm, let's say I'm in Whitetail currently doing construction stuff, but Whitetail has not done PV before. They are doing houses and suddenly the client says, oh, install a PV panel on top. Um, and then the guy says like, oh, how do I do that? So what is the method statement? to basically install the PV panel. You know, what, what do I need to consider? So that's my my prompt. I, I literally have given this into ChatGPT. So that, that's my text here, okay? And then ChatGPT, sorry, ChatGPT has given me creating the method statement for blah, 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 blah. Here is an outline. So the outline is all here. So basically my document, the complete outline, everything is there. 
I could even mention follow international standard, follow, you know, the ISO 9001 for documentation. And, and basically that's what, it, what is the outcome here. Then the actual content for each section will need to be specific, blah, 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 blah. So you can include your project detailing. Uh, it's a house, it's in Johor, it's five story high, the roof is this size. So basically you can give all this detail and ChatGPT will do the net needful to give you full content for your method statement outline here. I hope this is an example. You know, um, you please ask your questions in the chat. My team will then highlight to me um, if there is a question. But this, this is a true and real example how you can actually write a document. Now, a method statement, what we usually write, can be between 15 to 30 pages, depending on, on what kind of works it is, sometimes even more. Now, to write a document like this, even, even you take an example from a previous project, if you're lucky you have that, it, it still takes you a couple of hours to write the proper document. Let's say it takes half a day, hmm, four hours to write that document without AI, because you start from scratch. You have to basically put all the text together. Now, using AI, from my own experience, writing a document like this, you are done within one hour, finish, complete. And the output is proper English, the right words, everything is in place. Now, here, another example, lesson learned report example, okay? I did this, that's my own example here. I met the team to discuss lessons learned. This was two, three months ago about um, brainstorming and basically, I got input from whiteboards, WhatsApp, and emails from the team. So let me quickly show this example here. So for those who know, this is OneNote. Free tool as well. You can use that. So basically, what we had here is the workshop notes and the raw input from the team after the workshop. So I took ChatGPT. And then I have written my own notes, of course, and then I put all the issues here in bullet points, what is my own story. And then I got, you know, system overall. Um, uh, sorry, guys, I maybe need to highlight. I'm in railways, so I'm on, on the system side where we talk about signaling, electrification, and communication systems. Um, then someone else has done a nice table here, another table, different. Different people, different way of input, basically all, you know, copy paste together. You see so many inputs. Now, guys, if you have all this information, if you would have to do this by hand, I'm not sure how long it would take you, but um, I would probably sit there one full day to re reach a, a certain result. And also I uh, what I have done here, I basically defined the terms and abbreviations because in, in these docs here I received, um, people use abbreviation from the uh, project, of course, and then the locations. So I have given all this as terms and abbreviations. Now I throw all this into one chat of chat GPT and I say, learn this, give me a positive answer when you have learned. And basically this is the output I've got, including the tables except the coloring, the coloring I did in one note here. But basically the table output, system risks and mitigations, system overall issues, and then signaling department, communication department, and electrification department. And you know, the proposed mitigation here, I ask actually ChatGPT with a prompt, whatever, you know whatever is in the text or whatever is not there, you please propose a mitigation. And you see ChatGPT actually filled out these tables in a very structured way, always the same um, format. And now I want to show you actually where the, the real value of ChatGPT is. I ask, okay, knowing all that information here, uh, it's a, it's quite a table. Um, if you look at it, you know, it's it's quite an information, isn't it? 
To get there, I'm pretty sure you would sit roughly one day to get such a report done. Now, what I did, give me basically the five key issues in summary of all these things. And basically what the, the guy is telling me here as a general pattern here, it's an inefficient workflow in some ways. So that where we can actually, you know, that the main take, that's all chat GPT here. So that, that's the beauty on what you can get out from such a tool, okay? Uh, to, to me, this is, is really beneficial and time-saving if you have this kind of input and that kind of output, which is incredible. And that's a real-life example, okay? That's what you can get from the free version of ChatGPT. The, the only thing is the free version, you have to copy paste the text in in my version I'm using. I can just upload any PDF or Word file or, or PowerPoint, whatever it is. This is it. But you can generate the very same result. Now, we have another point here, the Copilot, which is using now the full swing of features, the full swing of features of the Microsoft suite, my, uh, PowerPoint, Word, Excel, da -de -da -da, okay? How can we now leverage, assuming you don't have the business um, Microsoft platform, Microsoft 365, if you don't have that, then how can you make use of ChatGPT? So here we go. How you use your voice in ChatGPT? Now, uh, guys, you, I hope you downloaded the uh, app. So this is basically the app. Um, looks more or less the same on every phone. Doesn't matter which phone you have. And then there are the here, you know, the headphones. So if you click on it, doop, then the guy will start rotating. And now I can talk to you. Hey, I'm in a webinar here. Can you say hello to the team? Hello to everyone in the webinar. I hope you're all having a great time. If you have any questions or need assistance, feel free to ask. Okay, we shall Enjoy do the that. session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop now. So you you see the point already. You can talk to this guy and he will answer. Now, can you actually imagine having this tool available at your fingertips? So it's here with me. If I have a question, I don't know something which happens to me every day, uh, not knowing so much. I basically ask that guy, hey. What is about here? So I, I give you a real example. Huh? Um, if you are in projects, your boss is suddenly asking you, you know, you're a project engineer, and then suddenly they tell, oh, you need to do a planning in MS project and um, give me a plan for X, Y, Z job. And then you are like, oh, shoot, I never use MS project. Um, so where, where do I start? How do I start? Now, do you go in the old days, you know, you would go to the library and, you know, use the big books, isn't it? Nowadays, guys, the example here, talk to your chat GPT and ask. And guys, that's exactly the, te the text here. I got promoted for project planner and I need your help for detailed support. How to start a project timeline in MS project for a complex power plant, uh, complex power plant. Ah, see my English huh? um, to turn waste into energy. Include all key points to consider and additional resources to learn, and then you will see the result. Please rehearse this on your own. Or the, there is a software I, I like very much. Um, it's really helpful. It's a database, but cool. If you want to start with Notion, you have never heard about Notion. What, where do you start, isn't it? Those days, you would go into Google, what is Notion? And you get X results, and you have to check which one is useful. Now, I basically can just ask, uh, let's see, you know, since we are open here. Hey, I am new to the software Notion, um, the software I want to use for my personal knowledge management. What are the key features of Notion, and how do I start for quick results? Notion is a versatile tool that's great for, for personal knowledge management. Here's a brief overview of its key features and some tips to get started quickly. Key features. Da, 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 da. Do you, you see the box? You can 
So you see, immediately you get an answer on the spot and you don't need to be a very sophisticated guy asking a highly sophisticated question. It is literally the starting point here simply to do. Now you say, oh, that's all general stuff. Okay, cool. Now you challenge me a bit here. I give you a full technical example, which is this. I, I recorded that. I need your help. People in my project talking so, about or maybe I'm not, signaling I, systems hear? and standards. Okay. And what is so the text is here. This is what I have been asking. I have now. no idea what these people are talking about. And I need your help to understand and give me some typical distances. And what I need to consider for this kind of um, detailing. Sure, I can help clarify that for you. In the context of British railway signaling systems, the term overlap refers to the distance beyond the signal where it is safe for a train to stop. This distance is crucial because it acts as a safety margin to ensure that if a train passes a signal at danger, red signal, by mistake, it still has room to stop without encroaching onto the section of track that the signal is protecting, such as a junction or the next signal section. Hmm. The typical overlap okay. distance can vary depending on several factors, including you the see, speed of it, the train. We are halfway on only. Line. I stop it for the sake of the timing. I believe you get the point, isn't it? Being in railways, signaling is obviously one key topic. And I'm asking something here where I'm not sure how many of you have ever heard about an overlap distance at signals in order to basically protect uh, the train in order to break on time. If you have no clue about it, but people talk in, in a meeting and you are blur, how would you get an answer, isn't it? Guys, now you don't need to be basically like, oh, guys, what is this? What are you talking about? You basically get your assistant here with really answers you would not get just out of anybody. And guys, this is crazy. You can ask which standards um, are you relying on and all that because I'm asking British signaling, obviously the network rail in, in the UK is one of the biggest um, standard setting railway for, for exactly this kind of things. However, if you see the detailing, what the guy got out here, oh, you need to consider if the train goes downhill, how big is the train, how fast is the train, everything is coming out from that chat GPT. So technical, you can ask all these questions as well. Now, there is an additional feature, guys. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited, you know. Uh, if you have this uh, app here, you see, you can take a picture or you can upload uh, a picture from your photo library or you can upload a file. Now, um, a very simple example. Again, for project management, even, even on, um, you know, construction site, I uploaded, I was just here in Johor, I uploaded from RTS beside the JB Central Station and the shopping mall here, this picture. And basically I asked, do you see any safety concerns on this picture? And the guy is analyzing that picture and is telling, um, yeah, you need basically, you know, the hoarding and all that. And then it says, because there is some material here, uh, maybe I can zoom in, which is just stacked like this. And what the guy is saying about the material these are potential, uh, the pedestrian walk, uh, workers on site are wearing appropriate personal PPE. So there is a lot of construction material lying around, which could be a tripping hazard, blah, blah, blah. So you can, of course, drill in much more. I, I'm just asking a very simple few words question here on that picture. Guys, do you see the value? You can literally load in more pictures. You can ask any question to that very same topic, um, I, I can show you what we do here. Da -da -da -da. So, you know, you can actually assessment progress tracking. Can you analyze this site photo and determine the construction phases on the projects? Um, safety compliance, that's basically what I just did. Resource and material management, you know, you need to load up maybe more pictures. So, or if you set the workflow with machineries and all that, you can ask, is that workflow efficient or not? So there are so many ways you can use nowadays photographs um, <clears throat> to, to analyze 
and you get all these answers. So, guys, to me, this is mind boggling, mind blowing, and it's um, crazy. I, I give you another one, which the free version can't do. You can do an own GPT. So we have uh, one more learning project coming um, on uh, PMCC Cafe, which is the mental turbocharge. It's basically how to optimize your timing. So I created this time boxing, which is from the uh, HBR, the, one of the most profound time management tools. So but then what I did here is for every day when you set up your planning, it's basically the personal time management to, to get a bit of inspiration, what do you want to do? So now I hope it works. Let's see, that's it. Where is my chat GPT? Oh, here, sorry. See, I have basically my team's chat GPT. So I have this thing, I can click here, straight into the, um, into the screen. So, and I programmed this based on this template and said, give me leadership, give me coaching, give me ideas, uh, basically to plan my day on a more inspirational way. I click and the guy is giving me three examples I can plug in. In the morning, you know, or when, when you start the planning, you get this already, you get an idea, you can go ahead. So these GPTs are basically personalized apps. So uh, I have another course where I gave prompts, how to do risk management, for instance. So I can actually create a GPT just for risk management that then the chat GPT will ask me questions about my project, the situation, all these things. I key it in and I get my risk table out already. So this is how actually the GPT works and it's available as we speak, as we know. Crazy, isn't it? The next, guys, what, what also is a very good topic, uh, respectively, that's a very hot topic in our uh, workshop on the 4th of May, that you become tech smart here. You need to learn how to be that tech street smartness uh, in order to understand how can I use AI? Where is it most applicable, isn't it? As, as the NVIDIA boss said, you don't need to become a programmer, but you need to be tech smart. And this is all about what we're going to teach. And of course, there is also a prompt where, you know, like uh, I'm new to tech world. What do I need to study? What do I need to learn? And what I have on my side during the workshop, there will be uh, Kumaran, who is a specialist in cybersecurity. And he will basically teach how to you know, do prompt engineering for better outputs, but as well from a technological point of view, what can you upload, what you should not upload, where to upload, um, and what, how to use the data, basically that you are safe. That's the whole idea on this tech savviness to become tech smart. One huge topic, guys, is leadership. Why do we talk about leadership here? You know, uh, listen to Jack Ma. Intelligence will never have wisdom. No. Can no, you hear no. it? It's about a valley. It's about wisdom. It's about experience. It's about a use experience. It's about the your life experience. So I don't think the machine, the artificial intelligence, is going to replace the wisdom. Artificial intelligence is going to be very smart. So the smart between the smart and the wisdom. Smart people know what you want. Wisdom people, wise people knows what they don't want. Hmm. So I hope you get the idea. So, you know, as a leader, I, I have been asked, why do you include the leadership topic into AI? Um, now, if, if you are on a working level and you use AI as a hobby personally for whatever you want to en enhance, you know, if you want to learn badminton and you want to become pro of course you can ask chat gpt what do i need to do you know become my badminton coach and tell me what do i need to do to become better in playing badminton chat gpt can tell you that's not an issue but if you want to use it professionally in your company 
the leaders of the company, the bosses of these companies, they have to understand what AI can do. What And as Jack Marcher said, what you do not want from AI to happen, like cybersecurity issues or opening doors, and basically let out uh, the knowledge from your own company. So there is a certain level of understanding a leader has to have. And at the moment, you know, there is a transition that some people are worried. Oh, AI, you know, it's very dangerous or, you know, no, you don't know actually where to start. It's, it's kind of fear, isn't it? So now you have a choice. You can just forget everything and run away. Or as a leader, you basically can face everything and rise. And that's the whole story here. We teach you how to do it. It's, AI is actually pretty easy if you know how to do it. So it's that's the point, isn't it? So, and as well, a leader has to get away from, oh, that's how we did it for the last 20 or 50 years. Um, basically the old school, let it go. Because as you figure out now, this AI is profoundly changing the world. But actually for me, that's less the worry. We have been changing the world over the last decade already many times. The biggest problem here is it is damn fast. and <laughs> We don't have time to play. And, and that's where a leader actually has to become AI enabled and tech smart and basically to be ready to lead the next generation of talents. There is a study, you know, of course they do these studies, isn't it? So attracting the talent and retaining the talent, this is basically the biggest deal in the future, isn't it? And for me personally, as well in PMCC, I want to hire talents who actually are AI enabled. I don't need someone who has no clue about AI because they will simply be too slow doing the job in the future. Simply they can't do it in the near future to come. So I need people who actually are enabled in AI and this tech smart. We don't need programmers. But we need those who actually understand the technology and the impact to it. Uh, because that, that report here, everyone can download it from the internet. It's also, you know, managing remote and hybrid teams, managing constant change that's obviously happening, and this developing digital dexterity. That's where I got the word from. from obviously, I never heard that before, but it's basically hands-on um, on digital knowledge. That's why I call it tech smart. So that's, to me, very important to understand, guys. The current talents we have, we need to train them pretty quick in AI. And the new we hire, I would expect they got already this AI understanding. Now, why leaders need to be AI enabled? As I just mentioned, a leader has to understand the formula because without this actual intelligence, even a leader himself can't really use AI proper, properly. I mean, what's the weather today? That's not a question anymore, isn't it? So the question is, what is proper prompt engineering to reduce my working time for the, the documents I'm producing, the processes I follow, how can I cut down the processes in my office, in my project, in my business? That's the key. These are the questions to ask. And it cannot be Tom, Dick and Harry on the working level. It must come from the leaders who ask these questions. Now, a leader can only ask these kind of good questions if they actually understand what AI can do. And if they don't know AI, by now they know what to do. Sometimes I'm as well pretty lonely because... I'm the boss of a company or head in a project. I cannot ask people, hey, what do you think? What should I do? Sometimes I do that, but sometimes I'm happy to have now AI say, what would you do in this situation? I get 10 options and I'm just 10 options smarter. I got more choices, isn't it? That's what I want as a leader. Hence, you have to understand AI. And guys, one of the biggest topics as well, and we address this um, in our workshop on the 4th of May as well, in all details, coaching is 
one of the most profound leadership technologies nowadays to help people to grow. And it is not sitting anymore for three years for a degree because uh, it's too slow, isn't it? You need to become certified now. You need to learn now. Five minutes of a profound information may change your life or help you to get stuff done. And you don't have time to sit in for a three days <clears throat> workshop anymore because ultimately what you hear is redundant maybe in many ways. So as well, we teach you how you coach yourself, how you become a better leader, how you become AI enabled. And most important is once you know that, how you get your learning machinery, you know, your own learning part activated on a daily basis can you imagine every every morning you learn 20 minutes ai can help you on doing so you become just much much smarter and again you will easily easily gain that time again by applying all these ai tools we just mentioned here i believe i have given you a couple of examples of course 4th of may on that saturday where um, PMCC Cafe is equipped and myself, the lead trainer, Roshni, as the overall uh, trainer for leaders and coaching, Kumaran for the cybersecurity and the tech smartness, you will understand that combination. It will give you a boost where you literally learn that day and it keeps you learning and, and the machinery is on your own learning because this AI you have the knowledge of the world at your fingertips, isn't it? <laughs> Basically, nothing can stop you anymore because you have all the answers available. Now, are these answers useful? In some cases, maybe not. And that's why AI multiplied by AI equals the result you get. That's the real tech smartness you need to bring to the table. So... Um, I did it almost on time. Huh? Any questions? Do we have anything from the team? or? Yeah, there's a few questions. You can see there in the chat box. I'll read by order. Lah. First is a question by Michelle Chan. So, can I just input pictures and content into chat GPT? And will chat GPT give me a leaflet as I want without using Canva or any other software? Sorry, where is the question? In the chat box. Yeah. Okay. The leaflet is not just coming out like that, unfortunately. What, what ChatGPT can do, at least my version, it can generate graphics. Um, a lot of our marketing, actually, um, is generated, these graphics are generated by AI. And then Sarah will basically plug it together um, either in Canva, the free version, or, or in PowerPoint or whatever tools and plug it together. But maybe Sarah can can say her own piece on that, how, how it's working. But you have seen as well, Sora, you know, the video creator is actually there already, but it's not for the public yet. The 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 profound quality of these kind of videos, it's crazy. But there are, if you want to have specific leaflets, there are tools out there, they can just produce those. But what I understand, Canva is one of the most profound tools for doing exactly that. Uh, even the free version can do great stuff already. If you actually use um, ChatGPT graphics output, then you should be there already. So the next question I have, you seen have you seen any errors of this crisis communication around stakeholders okay abuse hum um okay AI is literally like a gun in someone's hand. Yes, you can, of course, you know, ask questions and um, get answers and use it for bad rhetoric as well. Um, um, 
stand-up comedians use ChatGPT as well to create their jokes, you know, bad jokes, good jokes. It is really a matter of what is your intention. If you have a good intention, again, the AI times AI formula equals the result. Good intention in, good result out. Bad intention in, um, bad in, uh, result out. It's rubbish in, rubbish out. That's what it is. The formula counts. Now, <clears throat> um, I'm not sure exactly your question. What what else you you? Peter, can I jump in here? Yes, for a please. Yeah, it's Roshni. Hi, Mala. Just to answer your question from a communication point of view, and I think one point is also research that is that that is collated in the whole virtual world is only up to two thousand and one. So if we're doing fact checking and and making sure that you know, especially in communication and crisis communication. It's really important to double check the facts that we are taking from AI tools. So having done research projects that require uh, fact checking and validation, AI is a great tool for prompts, as Peter said, and it speeds up you know, frameworks, et cetera. But if we are really looking at communication and engagement, we have to be extremely careful in terms of the facts that are used, and we really need to double check that um check that point so i just wanted to jump in on that thanks roshni so you guys see now my master coach at work yeah? <laughs> very good so what else do we have perhaps i can show you guys this step by step yeah, yeah, guide go on ahead, how basically. to go yeah. through the workshop all right um i'll just start sharing my screen let me know once you guys can see it Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here awesome. we are. Awesome. All right. So this is the exclusive discount for our Brain Huddle participants only. So as you can see here, the price is um seven hundred and eighty, but for you guys, okay, those who join this session only, you will get half price, which is three hundred and ninety. And then let me show you where to purchase. Uh. Google. All right. So it is as simple as this. So our domain is very simple, pmct.cafe. Okay. You can just go to the web here. Okay. Right. So as you can see, we have the info ready here, which is the banner of our event with all the speakers mentioned. Just now you saw Peter and then Roshni and we have another one guy, which is Kumaran. And then from here, you can click on the banner. It will bring you to the product page then of course it is a very limited seat so you must book now like in um, right after this session whereby you will just need to click on the button and this pop-up will come out and then you can just type in your details and then of course i will type in my um, email address and then here this is the most important thing in which you need to apply the voucher code before you actually check out so the voucher code, okay, listen to me, it's BH50, okay, BH50. And once you apply it, it will be half price. Only then you will need to populate the details of your card number, et cetera, and complete the order. And after this um, process, you will be receiving a, an email via the email that you type in here. So make sure that that email is uh, working and it's um, the email that you are actively using and most importantly, again, I said, apply BH50, okay? Apart from this, uh, I'm just highlighting that in this whole workshop, workshop session, um, perhaps like in today's um, like day-to-day -day tasks, you know, and you use AI in general, there's a lot of AI tools in the whole world, but then do you really know how to use it, right? That's why we have our prompt engineer and how on how to use AI, etc., as what Peter had explained before. So don't forget, uh, yeah, don't miss out the chance to actually grab it today. All right, that's all from me. I hope that this is clear. Yeah, but yep. the workshop today is like a prerequisite for that course because the, these are the basics you need to know, like the app that you can, you know, use the voice, you use pictures and all that. Because in that workshop, then I will push you to the next level. And um, together with Roshni and Kumaran, you can imagine how much you actually learn in, in this direction of AI. Um, and, and it, for sure, will benefit for the use of AI in your work, at your job, 
but even personally, you know, any personal question you have, you can just ask the guy and it, it will answer, you know. And for the ladies, you can switch to a lady voice answering you. Easy, isn't it? So it's it's beneficial really for everyone. However, how you use it, you know, the wise use of the tool, that makes actually the profound output and benefit for you guys. Uh, I think that's all from our side. If there is anyone else having a question or, or anything, uh, please let us know what we do. The session is recorded. Eventually, we will publish it as well um, from the PMCC side. And again, for the workshop itself, it is a prerequisite to actually study that um, with all the examples that this is what you come with for the workshop. Okay. Okay. As Peter concludes his presentation and the Q&A session, I extend a heartfelt thank you to every, each and every participant. So this knowledge may be applicable to your work life or even your personal life. So um, one more thing I would like to remind you is don't let the opportunity slip through your fingers. 50% is a lot, okay? So secure your spot in the PMCC Cafe workshop uh, in 4th of May today um, because it's pretty much a follow-up session to this uh, brain huddle session. So what you learn here is just the surface of what will be presented on that day. So that is your gateway to unlocking the full potential that lies dormant within you. So stay connected with us on our social media, subscribe to our newsletters, or even visit our website to ensure that you never miss out on the electrifying experiences that await you in our future brain huddles. So thank you for gracing us with your presence and may the rest of your day be filled with wonder, inspiration, and endless possibilities. Farewell until we meet again.